Right then, this video is about who owns that airspace. Who says where you can and cannot fly? Is it a council? Do they give it? Or a national trust or railways? Let's have a look at airspace and who owns it. Now, the CAA, the airspace regulator, gave us CAP 722C. Very nice of them. Thank you very much, CAA. So, we have this. Now, in this document, it quite clearly states that airspace is a state asset. A local authorities, like any landowner, may usually only impose restrictions on the taking off or landing of the unmanned aircraft systems from their land, and that's usually through bylaws. They have no say on overflight. Councils will say it, National Trust will say it, they have no say on overflight at all. So, I googled uh, the next council to me, this is Doncaster, and this is their drone guidance. And they don't actually have a bylaw against drone flying. So they're saying be safe, be drone aware, be drone legal, which is great. This is what we'd like to see on more council websites, not just the no, you cannot do this. And then they even go on to give us the flight restriction zones for the two airports in their area, which is great. You know, a bit of common sense from a council. So there's no outright ban, there's no bylaws for Doncaster from what I could find. And this was the 23rd of June, as you can see at the bottom there, 2021. Now, we've got the National Trust, and they have their policy. And so basically, they're saying they say it's not permitted on or over National Trust land as part of their bylaws. However, overflight, they don't get a say on it. So, take off and landing, yes, a bylaw, but it's also very grey for them. Until it goes to court, to be honest, and is actually set in stone, it's always likely to be grey. They are concerned that the insurance isn't going to be enough. Um, and these places, they say that these, these places are for everyone. National Trust protects these places for everyone. Well, if it's for everyone, that also includes all the drone flies. So, again, they can say no to take off and landing, but for overflight, if they don't, if they, they can't stop that, okay. So we're going to take what the, what National Trust with with a little bit of pinch of salt and go overflight. We will overfly because we can, okay. But if they've got a bylaw that says you can't take off or land, then that's fine. That's what we have to stick to because it's a bylaw, okay. And that uh, that was just one of the National Trust websites, as you can see. Now, in the UK, interestingly, there's a great company, Altitude Angel. I found out they actually fight our corner a little bit, um, interestingly. So the likes of Network Rail, who we all know, and you've probably seen the videos, hopefully, in the thing where they say no more than 50 metres from their infrastructure, which has always been rubbish. It depends upon what aircraft you're flying, what rules you're flying to, and you can overfly a railway line. They would actually like to lock off that airspace. But then, if they did that, we've now got the highways agency, who are also wanting to get in on the game, shall we say, on not allowing overflight. And they're saying, well, actually, if it's above a road, that means that's our airspace. We want a bit of that. And on the QT, this is, by the way, and it looks like it's quite interesting. But if you had a railway line and a road intersect each other, or one goes over the other, which one gets that bit of airspace? It would be a right pickle. And if they're running next to each other, again, it'd be a right pickle. Um, could you imagine having to talk to different systems to cross a road or something? I mean, manned aviation doesn't do it, microlights don't do it. And if they don't do it, we shouldn't have to do it, basically. But there are companies and departments out there who are all fighting their little place because they want, they think there's money to be had and they want control. And yet still, in over 21 years now, since CAP 722 came out, no one has died from a multi-rotor falling out the sky and hitting them. Be it, you know, you're riding a push bike, more people sadly die on push bikes, in cars, you know, even fishing, more people sadly will drown fishing in a year than people killed by drones because 
in the last 21 years, nothing. So anyone that ever spouts safety for overflight, and it shouldn't be allowed because of safety, you can quite happily point at them, ridicule them, and take the mickey, in my opinion. Because if it was so dangerous, you know, we would have bodies everywhere. And, you know, it sounds a bit harsh and brutal, <laughs> but, you know, it's people that don't understand risk assessments, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion, and no one else's. And I'm always wrong, remember that. Please remember that. So, yes, um, basically, airspace, state asset, you can overfly people's properties with the right aircraft. Just bear in mind privacy and any images captured. That's the main concern now. So the CA doesn't regulate that. So, again, the CA might look at it, but they don't regulate privacy, GDPR. They don't regulate that. They only regulate the sky. So use drone assist, check where you can fly. If you're in a flight restriction zone, get permission. See the video in the channel on airspace checks. Uh, and just enjoy flying, everyone. Um, take care and have fun. Have a good one. Cheers.